Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sex Actually Podcast. Your boy Dave Neal, co-host with the co-host Tasha Courtney, and we Hello. have Chris Rubio, everybody. Let him hear it. Yeah. There's, you know, there's actually an applause button on there where you can like <laughs> tap it and it like makes the applause noise for all the listeners. Chris brought his uh, whole band here today. So uh, can you, Dave, do you mind just to pan the camera over and show them Chris's setup? Oh, Say don't mind. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got Chris on the wide then, so people can see him on the wide. Good. But on can you wide. point it back to me now so I can read <laughs> out all the comments? All right, everybody. Uh, all right. We've got... Uh, what, 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 what is this thing? All right. Oh, so I'm this, sorry. Did I... Did no, I, no, did no, I, no, did I start I'll answer there. your questions. We'll just get chatting. Oh, so this coffee? is... Your coffee's right, right there. there. <sighs> Hogwarts mug is all yours. Yeah, you got Harry Potter coffee. <laughs> um, this is an app. It's called Live AF. Oh, nice. Um, and it's live streaming. And they're listening to our podcast right now. And my friend Koji just popped in the stream. Hey, Chris, you're telling me, Chris, you're telling me we're going to be able to live stream to Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, all that at the same time. At the same time with a subscription fee of $20 a month. Oh, that's what I got to pay. Not the audience. Not the audience. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, folks, donate. uh, (laughs) It's 20 bucks a month. Uh, I guess I could could use a tax right off. I I mean, it it makes sense. I mean, uh, you guys are podcasting. Hey, if it gets you the numbers, then it's all ad Do you guys live stream as well? Uh, As opposed to this, do you guys live stream? We've tried it in the past, but uh, we didn't have the right technology. Well, you guys have that cable. That cable. So here's the thing that you could live stream off your computer that the MacBook Pro off to that camera and then whatever you have with that camera you could live stream with that cable so you could do like two or even possibly five live Jeez. streams yeah. at the same time so it really is about killing two birds with one stone it, re- or it really is like it really as, is as much as we can like multitask and accomplish everything at once that's what we love for tech support call chris rubio <laughs> at 1-800 every chris. time i have a techie question from now on i'm gonna so what do you got here okay you know uh, to properly introduce chris uh, tasha i don't know if you know the story so uh, and, and by the way i'm very happy to have you here it's been a long time coming i've known you for going on probably four years i would four say or five years we yeah. met so two i had to do two shows in a row <laughs> where i had to follow this guy <laughs> and he does like and it's and, and it's he crushes. He's he's a he's a he's a funny comic, but he's also got the the sound system jokes. He's got a whole like rock band of comedy. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. one thing to like follow like an acoustic guitar as someone who's like telling jokes with a stupid guitar, but I gotta follow this like like rock ha- star, you know, halftime show, drum, <laughs> fireworks, lightsabers. And both times it's like they've just seen yeah they've just seen this fireworks show, and then I'm like, <laughs> iPhones are tricky. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it, it it I always say to the comics, I'm like, it hey, just just uh ride the wave that I've just done for you. <laughs> no, I, I'm stuck in the riptide. <laughs> no, and, but what and then I had you on that I did that uh, frat show at you uh, Oh at, yeah, at that's Northridge. Right. Yes. And I made a mistake of having you go up first because it's like it's not humanly possible. Like, what we, what what you do is it's cool, it's different. It's uh, you know, this you got the voice, you know. What, what what would you explain? What would you call all this? Um uh, fun, by the way. <laughs> so I have a couple pieces of hardware, and uh, this is like the fifth revision of everything. So this is this is a loop station. Um, so what this does basically records my voice and telepresses buttons. Records my voice and telepresses and I can add things over it. And I can add things over it. And and with this, I could just make simple like simple loops, like. You know, so hey, that's it. Mickey, you're so fine. Yeah. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Tashi. And this is important. I just got this. This is a vocal transformer. So what this does is uh, basically I could sound like a robot like this or like this or like this or like this. Or I could always sound in pain. <laughs> We're talking sex. Wait, does it, oh, does it go on mine? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do want you guys to wear this headset. And or to where this this mic set, and I, I I want you guys to experience how you guys will sound like if you guys were in every every because every rap video nowadays has an auto tune feature. So yeah, basically that's, that's why they sound all good. You know that's why. Oh my god. Can you give us a uh, sex actually podcast like uh, like coming back from break with that with that auto tune? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I could make my, myself look very sexy, like like. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, baby, we're gonna we're gonna get down, Dave. Oh yeah, baby. 
oh, we're going to get your girlfriend out of here, and then me and you are going to do our thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just came a little bit. Transformer. I got pre What's that like head tra- Optimus uh, Prime? <laughs> <laughs> So, and, okay, so, so yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we'll definitely get Tasha and myself on this. But also, and this sure. is all new equipment. You just got robbed. I got jacked. Or, you got what? jacked? It was right after a show I did on Melrose. And it was like one of those where I had a great set. And I was like, uh, right after the show, my friend's like, hey, uh, w- w- let's just grab a drink real quick. And like, I literally just put my stuff inside my car for like 20 minutes. I just literally had one drink, went back to a car. Uh, was it visible, glass. like in the back seat or in the? You know trunk? what? Yes, that was my fault. She's victim shaming you. No, so yeah. no, 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 no. But, but it's curious because no, no, no. there are bad yeah. areas all over town where people just get, break exactly. into your car not exactly. knowing if there's yeah. something. They'll smash all the windows in a row, like yeah. on the street. I haven't had that feeling since my car got jacked back in college, back in like 2002. Where'd you go school out here? Uh, yeah, CSI. LA man, LA's fucking. Ruthless with that shit. LA is ruthless with that. That's why socialism doesn't work. <laughs> People <laughs> just taking shit that's not well, theirs. Well, you know uh, I mean? and there's no accountability because the, no, the cop, no one's catching them. But like, don't they use like a little? Don't they have like a little like sharp thing where they just tap your window and it shatters? Yeah, I don't they know. got like uh, things probably. they do. They have even more sophisticated technology than that nowadays. Mm-hmm. They um the latest thing that I heard about is some sort of it's like an electronic thing. So I'm gonna ruin how I explain it. But <laughs> it, you know, like if you have a fob which everyone does has like a fob keyless entry are you entry. talking about fresh off the boat you are so <laughs> racist the both of you the both of you if you have a little key thing that unlocks it they can like be outside your house and scan and like the signal is strong enough that they can like copy like the coded signal inside your little fob yeah, keyless yeah, entry yeah, thing yeah. and they can just hold this box next to your car and unlock it dude that's why when the grid goes down it's gonna be a bunch of dudes in their Ford Broncos 1988 with those like diesel engines just running around and everyone with their Prius and their you know keyless <laughs> d- uh, garage doors are going to be stuck at home eating their quinoas and shit you see like yeah, how I got yeah. Republican and there she, <laughs> yep, and when she goes like, hey yeah, you're not too far off man let's not forget we're living in LA you're in the heart of where the LA riots used to be fuck you know what I mean so don't 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 ever assume that you're ever going to well let live. me ask you this as as today we had a um, uh, we had a 7.0 earthquake in Alaska that's today. crazy yeah. But what's, what's your escape plan if shit goes down? What, what are you going to do if there's a ring of fire around your building and there's rioting? And- well, I'm in the process. Me and my wife are in the process of buying a gun. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you need a gun here. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not Especially just, I'm, I'm not just saying. Homeowner. It. Yes, we've, exactly. We've, ta- we've had this conversation many times. We got a bat by the door, but she knows she, I'm a pitcher, man. I can't hit that well. So <laughs> <laughs> I can hit. Did you hit him? Nah, I got him on the elbow, but he's still hit. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, you know, we live in an apartment building now, so it's a little safer. We're not on the first floor. You know, like there are little things you can do to make yourself safer. Yeah, someone would need a stepladder to come get to us. Which, but. Or, I, but or, still, somebody could just go in your door. But if, when but you if, we, if we had a home with windows, we're, we're not going to have like and you're living bars on the first on the, floor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I got renter's insurance just recently. Not only do I have my dog. Did you have it when you had your stuff? No, off. I didn't. So you that's like this what is a, kind of uh, an apocalyptic me. episode now. Yeah. Well, here's what I came up with. Okay, so assuming assuming you're just like multimillionaire, you got a home in the hills. What are you going to do now? You need, of course, you need your Tesla and all and all those types of you know your your. But you need like yeah, you need an old car like a jeep when i got in my accident my like jeep had the tires ADC blown vehicle. out my jeep was crunkled in half and you could still pop it into four-wheel drive and get the fuck away and you need and here's what i th- i say if i if i'm living like in a mansion i'm getting a hot air balloon that just kind of oh, contains God, you itself. you did think about this. You yeah. Piece of shit. Hot air balloon. Because imagine. <laughs> that air balloon is useless. The, the if highways you're are gone. By the highways are gone. The fi- Well, yeah, you're right. Well, that was like what, what, what that Bill Burr said. You know, that, that, that Bill Burr joke. Like, hey, just in case she, she, she goes down, I want a helicopter. Because yeah. the helicopter is the ultimate. Fuck this shit. I'm getting the fuck out of yeah, here. You need <laughs> like- <laughs> A Every high house. tech safe room with like fireproof room oh, where you can put all your valuables. Sure. Like, say you needed yes. to like escape and like you just wanted to put like you know the stuff that you have to keep safe. That's important. All in one room, fire fireproof kind of safe room, and then you just bounce on your helicopter. Yeah, I mean, well, if, I mean if I had a lot of fuck around money. Like a lot of like like money where money is not an option, I would definitely have like a basement, uh, like 
vault. Yeah. Like where I could just lock myself yeah. and my wife and my dogs and just like yeah, do just surveillance with cameras. Like yeah. a bunker. Have you like, ever seen those preppers? Like, isn't there a show, Preppers? I'm not sure, but... That would be a great show. Wouldn't that be great to have a podcast? And like, they're like, we haven't heard for like every week. Or, the beans were pretty good this week. It was the same shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're just really... And no like, one's who, listening makes to you podcasts, think that- though, anymore. If like the grid goes down, you would have to have like a ham radio broadcast. We could like podcast old school ham radio Yeah, people style. are listening on the other side of the wall. Like, hey, what's going on over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like far off. We've had guests like Hunter Hill was on. Um, actually, Tasha wasn't here for that episode, but he was part of the mudslide that wiped out whole Holy towns. I mean, you don't, th- yeah, that last year. And so we just had these bad fires and, and, and thank you so much for the, um, the podcast listeners who have asked how we're doing. When you see stuff on the news, you assume like when, when we had a hurricane Katrina happened, I actually studied abroad in France and I had, everyone would, was asking me like if I was okay. And I was like, yeah, I lived 1800 miles from the hurricane. Jeez. But, but so when people ask about like, how's LA? It's like, well, I can't afford to live in the places that were affected, but it's, you know, it's pretty it's pretty crazy it's like they get you one week you're, you you're, you could burn down and then two weeks later it rains half an inch and you could potentially have your whole neighborhood wiped away which people don't understand that that ha- is happening it's crazy i know i mean uh i live in burbank so i don't really have a. uh there's no chance of a mudslide yeah you're pretty safe yeah uh, i like you, burbank a lot i love burbank so so what's the gun process What's the gun process? We don't know. We haven't. Uh, uh, it's not hard. Well, do you California guys, has. Do you guys to, currently have a gun? No, right but I, I got that paperwork that. last year. Um, and you just have to fill out a couple forms and then wait for approval. And they're they're a little more strict here than other states. It is harder of to get course. approved here Imagine than in Tasha, other states. Feminist with a gun. Do, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a movie title. Yeah. Wait, yeah. can I get some? Yeah, can I get some like uh, tr- voiceover? Uh, yeah. Feminist with a gun. <laughs> Coming soon to nowhere. <laughs> she will kill you. I actually saw, I was driving through on, on Pico today, and a cop, a cop got out of his car with a green shotgun. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe shotguns are supposed to be green. Maybe it was a smoke shotgun. I have no idea. But he had it holding up, like pointed to the sky, which I think is the way you're supposed to do it, or pointed down. He had it pointed up, and he went into a building, and they arrested a guy. And I was like, what the fuck? And he had two bullets, yeah. or whatever they're called. He certainly didn't go by himself, It was, right? it it was, was two cops. It was, but, it, but I was like, and I, and, I, and I was like trying to leave the area. I was driving away, but I was like, I'm putting my car in park and watching this You know one. what I saw <laughs> on the way home was two cops on horseback watching videos on their phones. The one guy was like, he was holding it horizontal and everything, like showing a guy like, look, look. <laughs> and meanwhile, like it's downtown, so like traffic is horrible, and everybody's blocking the box, which you can get. Is like, this where our tax tic- dollars are going? Right, you can get like massive tickets well, for blocking that? the box. And when I can't go anywhere because people are blocking in front of me, I'm like, cops, can you do something? But they're too busy yeah. watching. What's the new video game, Red Red Redemption, or whatever? Oh my Red God, Red. everybody's playing that. I, it, that it, it, it's almost it. to a point where I want to, uh, you know, get on that bandwagon. What, I, what's what's the big deal? Like, I, I don't do video games, but I would if I had them. I yeah. just they're just so expensive. It's I t- Time suck. Yes. I don't have any time anyway. I can barely send off like the two emails that I've like got to get done. Everything it, on my to-do list is like more than urgent. Yeah. You know, it's like so pressing and it's all in order of urgency and I can like only squeak through like two or three a day because they're isn't any spare time ever. I can get behind the idea of like zoning out at video games, but I mean, you, you can't, you know, spend hours. I, know, I, I did a show at uh, Harvard's in Long Beach about a week ago, and the bartender, his name is Jason, he was telling me, first off, I didn't know he was telling me about a video game until like in the middle so could you imagine a guy's like oh my god man yeah so i got this girl in my room slashed her throat right and all of a sudden i got her kids and i killed them in the face and all of a sudden i went outside killed her husband i'm like what the what the hell's going on and yeah that's when i had to pause the video game i'm like oh my god this is a video game well youtube's kicking off accounts that are posting the domestic violence but only domestic violence which i which i'm not gonna say i disagree that's fine but like you can still post accounts of like you running over a flock of Asians in an ice cream truck on on like Grand Theft Auto. That's but great. That's you can't everyday show. Korea town. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a whole okay. You know I've, I like to I like to send us off in fifteen different uh, areas. <laughs> Directions so at once. so anyway, it's not a post apocalyptic uh, type of show. Although it's in today's <laughs> world, it could be. Who depends? So, yeah, who knows when people are listening to this? Maybe they found this after the apocalypse. Yeah, probably. I've always said it'll be great. It, it would be very nice if like if Tasha and I are so lucky to have a long lineage of. 
of offspring and grandchildren someday and they can listen to us babble can you imagine if you had a your grandfather's podcast and you're like oh he's talking about getting a rim job like this is weird mm. what's that daddy oh my well, God, but a- you know what's interesting when you think about that is like all of the stuff that is no longer okay you know like back not saying that like racism was ever okay but people just had different ideas a hundred years ago and if you're listening to your like your grandma's podcast you might like cloud your ideas there about, was like, this the color kind of gentleman yeah would, that's so that, you, you know? know yeah that's so weird because uh yeah right now i mean there's a lot of policing as far as what people could say now and i totally get it you know uh, people that's been oppressed for years finally mm-hmm. having a voice like i totally get it but at the same time you know like i'm in the middle like you what's know what's your ethnic hair like what what i'm filipino you're, oh you're, you're okay filipino, there filipino. You go. Yeah, okay, also good. known as the mexicans of asia you know what <laughs> i mean because those spaniards Okay, and yeah. you got you you, you got uh, Rufio hair. You got yeah, that going exactly. on. Well, Tasha and I met Rufio a couple years ago. Did actually. you? Yeah. yeah, we did. Actually, right when we started dating, Dante Blasco. Yeah, he sells T-shirts at um, and he gives speeches. I mean, hey, look, do what you got to do. You Can you imagine that getting yeah. cast in one of your first projects and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go meet with Steven Spielberg and yeah, oh, Robin and Robin Williams. Williams. Oh, and 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 Julia, what's her name with the smile, Tinkerbell. What's because some Julia Roberts <laughs> and oh 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 and who's Captain Hook? Uh, oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Uh, Anthony, oh my god. Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman. Was it Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the Lost Boys. Where are they? And <laughs> I think that's everyone. I think we got everyone. But um, yeah, that's great. Oh man. So, but yeah, no. And it's interesting because when you when this policing that's going on, you know, we don't want to get too too far into it. But no, it's, it, please, I love, I love the comparison it. that it's okay if an actor says like something like uh, you know like in in a period piece like or or even not even a period piece but in a current day piece where if an actor's playing a skinhead that's okay but on stage as a comedian if you'll be like oh my 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 grandfather calls you and, and then you say some something that you know you can't say it's interesting that that you're held accountable when it comes out of your mouth except when you're in the screen actors guild doing it in front of a camera yeah Do you know what i mean that's i don't so know weird. i think there's a little wiggle room but you know, there there's always going to be people who are okay with it. And there's always going to be people that are not, and probably the people that aren't okay with it shouldn't be in the audience. But they usually have the loudest show. voices, and they're the ones that get hurt. But they usually actually find it online, which is the interesting thing. I've never really yeah. been approached in person. Yeah, that's but you know, I have thing. jokes like, like I was talking about how in the '90s we called a fanny pack a fag bag, and that's just what we called it. And I can't rewind to 1997 <laughs> and, and, and buy, teach your I, I want to buy a fanny pack. Better. By the way, that's so. Weird. I got a great <laughs> fanny pack. I got a good. I got a good <laughs> deal. Real, I got a good fanny I pack. I have a rack. running belt that I bought for the Women's March a few years ago. Because you couldn't have like bags bigger yeah, yeah. than like twelve inches by five inches or something. My God, you should give your guest uh, fanny ba- uh, fanny packs. We should. We actually, actually have we actually have gifts for our guests. Do you want to do you want to give Chris our sure? Gi- it's, I, I can't right behind reach you. It. Can it's you reach right for it? Right what? We what? actually make in the bag. It's what? in the bag. We Shut make... up, guys. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Not the wine that's next to it, but just the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's homemade. Oh soap. yeah, that's right. You know, I've been talking about my soap. So there you go. You and your okay. So what's what's inside this? It's got coconut oil, uh, olive, olive oil. oil. Oh my god, my wife will love oil. this. Yeah, and you know what? Nice regift. Here's what wife. you tell her. You tell her, <laughs> you tell her, you tell her your boy Dave Neal told her to do this. You just take a shower together. Let her use the peppermint soap on your uh, gr- on your ball grundle area. Yeah, and, uh, it's the same the thing. Same thing in both these, right? Um, I think they might both be peppermint. One might be lavender. How but, long um, is this process? These are about a year old, so they're nice, firm bars. The longer they sit, the better they are. Oh, really? um, we've got we've, a whole stack in here. We've got like probably a hundred bars. Boxes right there. There, I just cut up like eighty bars of soap the other night, and yeah, we probably we did. got people asking for orders. We're probably only going to be able to fulfill. How much do you guys sell them for? Well, a, a typical bar of soap goes for like six bucks. I think what we're going to do is put together a box of soap for for people to buy and and sell them for this like maybe like thirty bucks. Peppermint, and this one's lavender. I think. Oh my god! So anyway, for those listening, I, and because. Just, I'll That's do this great. shout out now. I, I know, I know. Um, uh, write into sexactuallypodcast at gmail dot com. That's where we're going to be selling them. I feel like we'll just do it through like Venmo or something because it's going to be small orders. But we want to yeah. give our podcast listeners the first chance to buy some. And of course, it's like it's the same price you'd pay if you went to some farmers market, and it'll come with our nice little SAP logo. And um, and yeah, and anyway, so we we're really not going to have that much extra. But this is kind of a nice test run because I feel like for Valentine's Day we can put together a really nice box of uh, bar of soap. And this is kind of like our, um, what do you call it, take uh, proof of concept? 
Because we've been ma- we've been making it for you like. You can open it up and get yeah. a good scent smell if you want. Yeah, yeah it might be that. a little sticky though. You don't want to be touching your. Um, oh, maybe it won't be. I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is riveting for the uh, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> no, but fanny packs. I mean, if you think about oh, like yeah. fun merch that you would want of somebody, you know, like koozie. You love a koozie, love so a koozie. like I get you. Who doesn't I, love a koozie? I think that <laughs> sap koozies is a fun idea, but like fanny packs. Hey, yeah. Yeah, fanny packs are fanny very pack. useful. And you know, fanny packs then used to be a thing. Yeah, people used to hate fanny packs, and all of a sudden, because they got pe- cool okay, again. people were, don't. I see a lot of people now wear a lot of fa- fanny packs, but they don't wear it on their waist. They wear it on the side. No, oh, they yeah. wear it. They wear it like this. That's the uh-huh. hip way. Of oh, that's a fake doing. way to wear it. Well, and that's the way I'm gonna that. wear it. You know, like. Gucci is selling like fanny packs and they wear it. They even do ones that are like little, they're like a belt attachment. It's like just like a tiny, it almost the size of like a coin purse and it attaches to your belt. And they're selling like designer, you know. Do you remember those tiny backpacks that were like six inches big? Yeah, I think you might have one of them. They were like really small, but they'd have like, <laughs> you'd wear it. So you'd put a whole strap on, like a whole backpack on, but the backpack was just a little baby size. You could fit like one egg in there if you wanted to take like, <laughs> it's like, a, why are you anorexic? Oh, it's because I have this size backpack. I can't afford more than a, you know, like a Sour Patch Kid to fit in it. But uh, you have one of those right i do have one <laughs> those are popular I, back in the day they were i have one that i, I didn't even know what the hell that in was Mexico it's just a years. shrunken it's just a, if you look a normal size backpack but it's I feel shrunken like they're down popular for like coachella you know if yeah. you have like a tiny oh are you talking backpack. about like it's like this size smaller mm-hmm. it's smaller yeah. than that what the fuck and you wear it like a backpack you put, you put a piece of molly that's in just, <laughs> that's how old am i a piece of molly <laughs> the fuck do i know <laughs> oh molly i love molly you guys never been a molly come on I, you guys I, don't look like i the actually type. i would but i haven't um i'm never presented with these opportunities i know Dave chris looks is our, like uh, a goody two-shoes yeah you've been a molly I'm not saying there were some ah, people, yes, there, yes. Were some, there were some people last night that were on some uh, Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I've taken enough Molly for me to look at a person and be like, Oh yeah, she's on some Molly. Does it make driving in LA traffic better if you're just rolling on Molly? My God, uh, hey. yes. It would have been nice to see that police with his um, shotgun. Last time, uh, it's over. So last time I was on Molly, uh, it was uh, a month ago in Vegas, and. It was one of those where I took I, 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 I took Molly and then my friend, which took the Molly like an hour before, he looked all trash and he was I was like, Oh my god. I do not want to be like that. I do not want to be like that. So I just want to go back to my room. And while in the process of going back to the room inside the taxi, it hit me hard. But it was great. <laughs> So you guys went down two different r- roads, two different yeah. Molly because roads. the problem with him was he was he was uh, shit fit. He 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 was uh, drunk before he yeah. did. and I'm like and whenever you do the, and, and and any kind of drugs like that, you want to make sure you don't combine two drugs. Do you yeah, and your wife? No um, do you and your wife dabble with different? Um, My wife is a complete clean freak. Really? Yeah. Is she okay with you doing different things? Yeah. But like, okay, because I, I'm not fornicated. I, I just get, uh, you know, I just, you know, I just, I just get uh, messed up with, with, with my friends. You know, she knows exactly where I am. I check in sometimes just to let her know that I'm okay. And, you know. How's, uh, how'd you guys meet? Oh. Yeah. Shoot. I was pretty irresistible. Pretty charming. When I was, <laughs> Don't <laughs> doubt it. I met her in a dance club with the most cheesiest pickup line that involved <laughs> the word spam. Oh, tell us the line. Uh, it was something like, hey, you know, you remind me of a, of, of a woman I would love to have a long romantic walk on the beach with eating spam. That's a, <laughs> it's somewhere along. It's somewhere along there. I had the word spam in it. So she what said. was the idea? Was the idea just to say something stupid? Yeah, because that's how you used to get single ladies. Yeah, like, you know. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt yeah, it. You know, right. like I, I would. It, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the icebreaker. You know, if 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 I come up with a corny joke and they're not feeling me, I'm like, okay, well. Okay, do you uh, do, do auto tune? Do you hit on her with auto tune? Is that how it works? Yeah. Just, like, just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Spam. <laughs> well, because so our buddy Gilbert, he's a good friend of the podcast. Uh, he's uh, he was my roommate when I first moved here. He's he's Filipino, and he was part of the like Asian pickup scene. Like, was that the Asian pickup? You know what I mean? Like simple pickup. pickup. You ever heard of simple pickup? I think that's what it's called. It's a, it's a bunch of like Asian guys that like all have like moves very specific it's a to the community of like dudes that get together. And I don't know if there's like a head coach. Are or they something, all Asian? But- yeah. 
And then what did they do? They just do stupid things. But I think I think when you the common denominator is they challenge each other to just approach women and talk to them. And again, it's a delicate and world And that's now. hard nowadays, too. It's because that, Well, you know, everybody's fucking connected through the computer. Nobody's... But, but don't you think, though, if you're not connected to the computer, it would be so... It, like, it's almost like a cheat code. You got everyone else looking at their phones, and you can just be like, hey... How about the Rams, huh? Well, that's the thing. That's, that's what you would do. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's spam. exactly what you would do. You look like that type of person. Hey, uh, how about the Rams? Uh, get the hell away from me! <laughs> but then she goes. Then she goes. Oh, I'm a Packers fan, and you go. Oh, you like Roger? And then you just start shit talking. And yeah. isn't hitting on people just shit talking? But the whole. But it's a skill set, and that's what we're saying. Is like a lot of people don't have that skill set anymore yeah. because they're not practicing it and developing it they're not, and they're not getting yeah. outside of their comfort zone they're in their phone and the brain will atrophy whatever it doesn't like you know what i mean like no one's memorizing phone numbers anymore you just forget you just lose yep. the ability to do that well uh men in general are uh, in danger of losing a lot of masculine traits nowadays well so you know what and uh, okay sorry to trip but this this episode's coming out, out on monday which i think is december 1st whatever happy december no, or december, december 2nd is tomorrow so December third, this comes out. So, the, so, so, you, so your episode, the one we're listening to, oh my gosh, is December third, and then the next week is Robert Candell, who, who, yeah, is is trying to give advice to men, which and it, and, it, and it freaks people out to be like, oh, giving advice to men is like, yeah, like we need, like we need to like mm-hmm. take our guys and be like, whoa, sure, there's bigger issues like the whole rape culture and things like that, but there's like issues that are more specific to like, yeah, how do you talk to someone in in a, in pick up their vibe yeah well but it's a it's a transitional time for everybody so like yes it's important for advice for dudes but really it's important for like all of us to learn how to like communicate better and be on that higher but plane. that's the thing that's what's in danger too so i read an article about a week ago about how uh a majority of young men from the ages of 22 to 35 are suffering more now of uh, erectile dysfunction Right. Whoa. Yeah. And, and, and doctors are not prescribing them because they're prescribing them Cialis and all this stuff. They, it, it doesn't work because it's more a psychological thing yeah. than anything else so because the they're related? addicted to porn. They're addicted to because they don't and, and they don't want to socialize. Well, you know and what I mean? Also, that's the age range of millennials, which there was a big article out today. I saw it in a bunch like it was, you know, mm. published today. Yeah. That we're like worse off financially than anybody ever. And that's why, you know, they've been blaming. Millennials are? Yes. They've been blaming millennials for like destroying businesses because they're not interested in eating out at Olive Garden or going to the movies or whatever. Well, but, our, the, uh... but the reason is... You you know, we came of age during the financial crisis, and we are more broke than the people who came before us. Yeah, but then and then you got businesses like uh, uh, um, that's taking advantage of the laziness, like Postmates and Grubhub. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, now you could order anything, which is you could just stay at home and get anything. Dude, I did. Want. I was at you. I was on UCLA's campus, and I saw a dude order. What did he get? Oh, I saw him. Cut, he he got out of it. He can't. He he he, 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 he crawled like crawled out of his dorm with wearing like Crocs, and he walked. <laughs> And he walked halfway <laughs> to the guy's car, and the guy gave him like I think it was some McDonald's breakfast. It was just like a little bag, and then it's he like walked you back inside. Get your ass to McDonald's, yeah, it's like, in bro. The you live on campus. You're willing Campuses to are... pay like triple the price for that egg McMuffin because yeah. you can't. Go. I never. Yeah, I... we did Postmates one time to get Starbucks, and it was probably like with a discount code like twelve bucks. Yeah, but we had a fifteen dollar. We had I deliver coupon. for a Postmates. So. Do yeah. you? Well, we had yeah. a coupon, so we were. Like, oh, I'll just fucking try it. What do you, do you have to deliver some freaky shit? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, the most weirdest stuff is just like picking up is like batteries and shit like that, but nothing too <laughs> too crazy, you know. Oh, we're, that's nice. It's yeah. this, yeah. I mean, we, you know, we hey, look. We're, it, it, I got a business degree. I do a free podcast. Like, so, yeah, there's a reason we're broke. Like, what are we hey, doing? I'm a broadcast journalism, uh, you know, graduate, and I'm doing comedy. There you go. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's like we're uh, we're the CEO of our own company, and we don't have to. We don't gotta take no shit from no one. But yeah. My my bigger picture point is that it's a changing world, mm-hmm. and like we have to learn how to adapt. You know, and there's going to be hiccups along the way. And if that means that guys are stressed out, we need to figure out how to talk about it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it won't be this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel... uh We have no real advice here. 
we can adjust. So if thing. you don't have an answer while you're listening out there, just find another financial podcast. This isn't for you. So, I, so, so I have friends that like Darren, all he listens to is NPR and like Tim Ferriss, the five hour week week. And it's like, bro, just, just fart a little bit into a microphone. Just have some fun. This is, that's what we're, I mean, we'll learn something, but I think this is more a, um, sort of, uh, like a reality. Like this is our live. You're our friends and our audience. There are friends. Now people write in and they're literally like, I'm sorry, this feels weird. I feel like we're best friends, but I'm, I'm, I'm John. And they, you know what I mean? Because they've heard 300 hours, some of them of us talking and hanging out and living our lives and we don't really know them unless they write in that's why i always encourage people to write in but it's an interesting like you know as a comic you get the chance to you know you get the chance to like make somebody happy it's i mean oh, i don't yeah, i don't, that's I don't what we live for i mean i don't mean to make it some whole like like greater because we we get the benefit of, of like feeling accepted that we made them happy but it's a fucking high that we can get sometimes just like yeah in a fucking room together and trust me i've done a lot of drugs and there's no better drug than than leaving that stage after you just Slayed, bro. I told uh, Tasha yeah, I mean, this, and she probably—I I, I feel bad for her. She just has to hear me come home after a show. Don't but feel bad. I did. I, uh, just tune out. I, did <laughs> I, did, yeah. I did the Hollywood Hotel. You're like my wife. <laughs> I did Hollywood Hotel, which is a shit. It's a shit room. It feels like you're a Scientology conference room. You know, you ever been to Hollywood Hotel? Yeah. It's, okay. It's just yeah. You know. <laughs> it's dude. So I, I go up there, and the funny thing is, you go on stage. It's a skinny but long room. So so most the audience is to your left. So if I if I'm if I'm like. Uh, how do I put it? So like if I'm like a clock, most of the audience is if I'm looking at twelve, most of the audience is tier nine, and then tier three is all the comics not paying attention, right? So I get up there, I do my first joke about Tasha being retarded, and I go, um, I go, my chick's retarded. Sorry, I can't Tasha. say. I go, oh, sorry, I can't say that my lady's retarded. Stupid joke. I've, I've said it on every episode last people. It's so stupid. <laughs> but I just, it's my way of like saying, like, are you guys going to be on board with some fun or not? And they hated me so much. I bombed so hard for the first couple minutes, and then I have never went from bombing so hard to killing so hard because I just wasn't going to take it. You know what I mean? You ever have those nights where you're like, I fucking drove here. I'm not going to take it. I'm not taking Taking this, and then by the end of my set, it was the it was it was fucking you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. that leaning into the audience where you just like you're just hitting, you're just like I will not. And the best person who ever did it was Bernie Mac on um Def Comedy Jam. Where he's, oh yeah, where he's like I ain't afraid of you motherfuckers yeah. or whatever he said. You got to have that kind of mentality because if you don't, I mean, you know, I, I I've been a victim of that where my vulnerability is just like oh shit I'm bombing, and then and then you know I I, I just go in the fetal position and they, they just eat you alive. And you can hear your voice. You, you can, can hear yeah. it and you're scared. So, so that's why, you know, you just gotta <laughs> just like, like with it's your funny. shoulders back and like, oh no, no, let's fucking go. And it's, yeah. You yeah, know? it's like leaning and not being afraid. You're right. It's like a fear thing and like a shame thing, an embarrassment thing. Like you're, we, all of these like, positions of weakness we start to really judge ourselves yeah. but if you just like lean into it and they're like okay this is well, my yeah. reality right now yeah. and like it's fine do you guys know jordan peterson of course yeah. okay so i'm a big jordan peterson fan yeah okay? so um, <laughs> she's like, uh, I, I have she mixed likes feelings. Him. I'm, I'm, I'm a big i, he was I mean a i mean that, his, but he's, his, well yeah but, but you know it, because he's a genius well he's a genius in his book it really makes a lot of sense to me, and uh, I sometimes do it when I, when when, I, when I'm on stage too. When if I'm feeling a little bomb or, or if I'm bombing, like literally a second, just putting your shoulders back does a lot for you mentally. Yeah, you know what I mean. And just because I read that book, like every time I go to a place, uh, what did I just do? I just lost something. Uh, that's, that's fine. Is it you? Is it me? I don't know. I'm still recording. Tasha, talk. Yeah, I'm here. It's your it's your sound. It's on your end. Hmm. You're plugged in over here. Yeah. Oh, this went. Was this lit up before? Oh, yeah. That was lit up before. No worries. It's okay. Do we need a battery? No. I got a battery. Dun, 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 dun. You guys, you guys do your podcast. Well, so, yeah, Jordan, <laughs> the thing with Jordan uh, Peterson, yeah, it's like, because we're talking about, you know, on this episode, we're always talking about, like, uh, hitting, like, like you know, hit, approaching somebody, hitting on them. And that's the biggest question I think people have is, like, how do you approach? Everyone knows you can have some weird conversation once you're, like, going at it. But, the, but like, how can you I break the ice? And it's the same thing with comedy. It's like, I'm going to go up in front of people that don't like me. I look like a douchebag. I in New York or LA or Boston or Florida, I'm gonna go up on stage and you're gonna not want to find me funny because I'm not 400 pounds and I'm not 
You don't, my well, teeth aren't all fucked up. Well, people make their impression of you within like 0.2 seconds or something. Oh God, they yes. make up their mind whether they want to like you or not before they even get to know you. Just like, remember I called you the other day and I said that lady was like such a huge... Yeah. See you next Tuesday. A, uh, and, um, cute. you know, somebody that I did, <laughs> did not, uh, had never seen before in my life, but just she decided when I started talking to her that she had no interest in being nice to me and being helpful and being receptive or whatever. It's not up to you. It's yeah. not up to you. So you just kind of have to like take what comes with you and be like, okay, this is my challenge for the day. Not feel shame about it. Not feel embarrassment about it. Not feel fear or whatever from it. Lean into it and face it. This is part of my reality. And you, and honestly, you, you probably wouldn't say this because it sounds weird to say, but like you're a very good looking woman. You probably get treated very poorly by certain other women. No guy's going to treat you that way. You know, I mean, maybe online some, if you know, like they don't agree with you politically, some guys will be trolls, but like no, but women can be very tough on other women and it's a hierarchy thing. It's a, it's a, and men, men do that to each other. Like I remember as a, you know, the quarterback who was one year above me in high school was was a dick to me. The quarterback that was two years above me wasn't a dick to me. I wasn't a threat to him. I was only a threat to the guy. One, you know what I mean. So it's just you like, would think that you sort of outgrow that stuff after high school, but the truth is that not everybody does. Hell no. Although yesterday, I don't think that was part of my case. I felt like I looked pretty homeless and dead yesterday. Yeah, but still, <laughs> you're you're doing what she thinks is a simple job, getting paid well, and she's probably stressed, and she probably just took it out on you. And it's like you know the enlightenment that we strive for, which you don't always hit, is to be like, I think I'm just going to sidestep your bullshit and not let it affect me. That's like the by the way, have you ever it. done stand up? No. No? No. Do some bits. I don't, what bits? I don't have Here we go. I mean, I mean uh, you know, I always, well, my wife never done stand up either, but I always like, I always say to people, just, just try it once. <laughs> I'll, write, I'll write your ass for you. I got yeah. 20 different Why hairsprays. did you take it to the fourth wall? That'd be so awesome. No way. I, Come honestly, on. No, listen, I did improv. We've told this story on the podcast. She before. did Upright Citizens Brigade. I did <sighs> improv. And I literally like had a nervous breakdown Why? on the way to the show. Oh, melt I get anxiety. Down. I get terrible anxiety. Join the club. I, we shit our join pants. Join the club. <laughs> I've never had a better shit than before a big show. And it always happens 20 like, minutes I before my set. I just get stage fright. I don't know. I, I don't handle it well. You seem Even, pretty like, natural here. Well, that, yeah, but this is no stakes. You yeah, know what I mean? Taiwan. Uh, if I go into a, like an audition, like I, I get red. I have to like, st- I have to power move before auditions. I have to stand up. I have to stretch my legs. But I have Chris, to guess what? I watched her show. I can't Guess drink what? caffeine. She killed. Oh, what? She did great. What the fuck? She's doing like, I, but I literally was like crying in the car <laughs> on the way like to the show. She's doing like jumping jacks and all these act outs. She killed. She murdered. She was great. But that's, that's, about, that's why I could never do stand up. Well, I just would hate I if just, you did it because then all the dudes are like, oh, she right together. You're great. And then you'll be on the pretty funny See, I, show. I, I hate that. Like she was nervous and then you say she killed. I, I, I bet you she's the kind of person like in a karaoke. Like, no, she's like, no, 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 no. I just don't want to say, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did this white white mutiny Houston come from? <laughs> yeah, and it's you know I used to think I was a decent singer, but I've been singing all the Christmas carols lately, and I, something's gone Can wrong. Can you play any uh, jingle bells on there? Do you know any jingle bells? <laughs> Do I know any like jingle bells? Jingle bells on uh, something that's not going to get me kicked off YouTube here. We'll hear Tasha's <laughs> voice in karaoke. No, I'm not singing. I'm not we should singing. do a karaoke episode for the for the Christmas for the uh, holiday <laughs> listeners. Well, I I'm don't really have the, anything. I'm all about actually. the Christmas carols. Ba-doo, ba-doo, oh, but actually, I, I do have a holiday. That my ba-doo, voice ba-doo, is not what ba-doo, ba-doo, I thought it once was, or maybe I'm just. There's a Christmas thing that I have. Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas! <laughs> 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 Yo, this is the Sex Actually Podcast. Chris Rubio, Tasha Courtney, and Dave gonna make it fast. Today in the house, gonna rap all day, motherfuckers in the... Yo. <laughs> okay, oh enough God, of that. So cool. Someone just drove off... 
Someone just drove off the highway in their Toyota Sienna. <laughs> They're like, fuck this, I quit. <laughs> no, everybody loves it. They Look love at it. Their little star. Uh, <laughs> what, what were we talking <laughs> <They're> about? Just, <laughs> everybody loves it. Okay, so we were talking about, and, and again, I always love, I, 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 wrote, I wrote this thing last year for, for a dating website, and it didn't go anywhere. It, it turns out the whole, the whole uh, the, their audience kind of, I wrote this thing called Date Like a Comic, right? And I, and I, I wrote like a whole thing, <laughs> where I like, date like a comic, like, Treat dating the way a comic approaches going on stage. Comics, we go on stage, we need approval. Now, it, it, we don't need it in a way like, oh, please, I have this. But we structure our act in a way that's like, I'm going to tell my joke up front that you're going to feel uh, feel for me. And then, uh, and, then I'm, and then once I sell you this easy shit about me getting dumped as a child, then you're going to feel funny. You know, it, you know what I mean? Like, you're going you're gonna to feel a little compassion towards me. And with, with dating, it's like, you don't want to be just an asshole. They always say like, "Oh, asshole, asshole." Your women want assholes. The women want confident guys. And, yes, and, you and can, there's a big well, difference between being a confident guy and being. But an you can ass. be an well, asshole. Well, 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 there's a difference between an alpha and a beta. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean, you, we we see it. We see it all the time. You know, I mean, you know, you could tell a beta male with an alpha female, and you know, I mean, and vice versa. You could you you could tell who wears the pants in a relationship in most cases. Tasha. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay, it's uh, it's me. <laughs> Just play the music now. Uh, I think we butt heads because we're both kind of alpha. Like we're both in charge. <laughs> we both, like we're both trying to. You well, know, there could be that too. Show. You know, I mean, I mean, but in, in the most part, as far as numbers, you know, I think there's, uh, you know. More relationships where there's an alpha, beta. where it's distinguishable, yeah. and, it, and it can flip flop. It's like I'm the alpha of doing the fucking laundry. I go, exactly. Tasha, give me your bras. I'll put them in the dry, you know, and then you know. And, but but that's not to say that you know, like like for me, like it may seem like I'm in the beta. Uh, I'm the beta when it comes to like, oh well, shit, I gotta go do shit and and, and, and stuff like that. But when we're out and shit gets go, goes down, sometimes I'll be the first guy to fucking speak up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so. it is. So it's not always like a you stay in your box. Like it, there's a lot of back and forth. We yeah. do a lot of like. I think I think we do a good job of like listening and compromise and like. Uh, don't save this relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Chris, you you, you you ask this lady uh, at the club about spam. How, how do we get to married? How, how do we yeah. go from spam to married? Okay, so and how long have you been married? Uh, twelve years. Holy Whoa. shit! Yeah. You got that Filipino. Can't tell your age. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> you could be. Yeah, married at thirteen. They're, yeah, they're, are you Catholic? Yeah. yeah, you get married young. I was Catholic. Yeah, and then became Filipino. Freaking an atheist. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know. It it it, it was uh, fairly quick. You know, what I mean, like uh, we 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 started dating, and of course, you know, the whole shebang of uh, introducing her to the parents. She went to the same college that we did, or that uh, I did. So we kind of met each other there as well. And you guys are multi-ethnic, if I recall from your act. Yeah, she's you're, black. She's black, um, and you're you know, Filipino. There yeah, you go. and so you don't have any kids, though, be. do you? No, beautiful kids. Well, yeah, Filipino well, black that, that's kids. the thing. So, so my sister, my sister's with with uh, with a black man. So most likely. You know, my niece, if we have a daughter, is going to look like my niece. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, the Rubios, uh, my family loves the blacks. <laughs> yeah, going to have great skin. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, so you, yes, no spam, whatever. But did she, was she, which, was, was, did it lead to a conversation right away or were you like, no, pursuing? it was like, it was like one of those where uh, I think that same night uh, I hit her up. I, I, I kind of, and it goes against every guy code where you're not supposed to call you know you're supposed to like let them wait, wait, you know, wait a couple sweat a well, this way. isn't what was this the but 80s that you guys her, met like well like this well, is the, well you know i, I, like I followed i followed that guy code but back you know then I mean? that was a tried and true now it's like you text good night or something like that now, now the rules are all over the place yeah i guess i I guess today's rules is what yeah, I Yeah, but exactly that 48 hour rule. You do the 48 hour rule today, she'll be like eight hours in, she'll be like, fuck that asshole, yeah, and then yeah, she's gone. Yeah. No, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's, you know, it's about not being too needy more than anything else. And in the beginning, I think it was easier for people to understand that, like, texting too soon or too often it was equated as needy whereas nowadays you can distinguish between like saying good night thanks for the date had fun you know is yeah, different yeah, 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 yeah. you know it's leaning back sort of emotionally and with your expectations well, that's what versus it is like every every 
every year people's uh, uh, attention span gets shorter and people's uh, reaction time gets shorter. So yeah, you know I couldn't I mean? imagine in today's world if you were. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't imagine if you if you meet a girl, you have a great night. And it, and it ends with a kiss, and then you leave, and then you just start texting her again. It's like, bro, you ended on the high note. You got to, like, you got, I mean, just text, say goodnight, do whatever. Dude, it's going like, to get to a point, like, 20 years from now, like, hey, thank you for the first date. Uh, let's get married. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know and then you're going to FaceTime each other on the way home from the yeah. date. It's like, you got to leave a little room it, to breathe. Yeah. Let, let them think, ooh. You, you, introduce, you introduce the parents before the entree in the first date. <laughs> <laughs> on the FaceTime. Jeez. So you guys, um, I mean, so you, how long you been together? Like, like how long We were was together this? for like uh, probably f- uh, five years. Okay. You're, yeah. Before yeah. you got married? Yeah. Okay, wow. And are, are kids on the docket? Have you even talked about it or not? Uh, we talked about it. We definitely want kids, but right now, no. Now, so I were you... I take care of myself. Did you, did you start as a DJ in, in the start, comedy? No, I started as a comic. You started as a comic. I so wh- a so comic. where does your experience di- with a digital platform come? I've always DJed. Okay. You know, so I used to play house music for, for clubs and stuff like that. So, and then all of a sudden, I, uh, when I was doing comedy, like, uh, I watched... I wanted to do something musically, and I was like, I'm not going to fucking play the guitar. I don't want to play the keyboard. And I was just looking for something until I saw Reggie Watts, who beatboxed, looped his beatbox, and sang and rapped over his beatbox. And I was like, oh, my God. This That's is exactly pretty cool. what I want to do. Yeah. Now, there's a few types of guys I'm jealous of, bartenders and DJs, because women <laughs> flock to them automatically. Yeah. They don't have to do much. They set up their thing. And it's actually a good example for, for men when they go like, oh, how do I attract women or whatever? Because that's the other thing. It's, it's, it's approaching women, but also attracting them. And I think the, the attracting is that it's that like cement you have in your foundation. Whereas like a bartender, you're probably sociable. You're kind of in charge of, you have of the be. way the room's going to go. And then they have to come to you. So you've got this like like built-in kind of like thing with a dj you're obviously like artistic you're in control you're fucking in control of the energy of the room if you're good and same thing with a comic and an acoustic guitarist and one thing after anything, another anything yeah anything that projects off speakers it's um, <laughs> no for real position you know of power. I mean? it's a position of power but there's plenty of examples as well uh, for 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 guys who just might be an engineer or something where how do they how do they demo in a way they call it in the world demonstrating higher value that's what the pickup artists call it. How do you well, demonstrate? Say that again. How what? do you demonstrate higher value? How does a woman? How, how does like Tasha? If you were single and you walked into a, a bar, how do you? Say we're in New York City, right? You're in the meatpacking district. You see 55 <laughs> different so guys. Very yeah, right. You see 55 <laughs> different guys all wearing Dockers pants with the crease and the uh, and the gridded dress shirt. How do you know which one of those is going to be the guy? That that you know what I mean? Like you have to have something. Yeah, there is got to be something that makes you stand out from the crowd. And they say right? little things so is like that, like confidence. Is that making eye contact? Is it the way that you're like projecting? Well, I'll tell you this: one of those guys is making is is holding court. One of those guys is it has got his group together. He's in charge. He's kind of loud. He's doing his thing. And, and generally, it's like you're just going to notice that over the, the the dweeb who's listening, who's who's the nervous Nancy. Like it's just kind of like a tribal thing. It doesn't mean that the the nervous Nancy or the dweeb. Uh, sorry to shame any dweebs out there, oh, you God. dweebs. But gen- those are no ones aren't bad guys. They're just not something you're going to notice in a crowded arena. And that's what you're well, dealing it's not with. That you won't notice. I, I I disagree with you there. I think that there's like a match for everybody. Um, but let me twist this around on you. Who's the guy you remember from 30th and 3rd Street when we met at 6 a.m. on a whole bus? One. The loud one. Me. I'm sorry. The yeah. one that you make fun of for saying how loud I was. And I go, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> it was me. It was me. And I wasn't necessarily doing it to, for you, you know, to hear you, me. You know what's so strange? I don't know if this is so cliche, but it it's it's like... It's like you guys look like you guys should be together. Aww. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's like it's like when people look at me. It's like we. It's it's like we're the we're the mirrored of the other gender you know it's yeah. like you find someone who's well suited for you who, no well it's not even well suited it's like it money and shit aside just 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 the just the look of it you know what i mean <laughs> no 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 that's for all real. we care about is how we look it's, on instagram it's, it's like uh, i don't want to be you know be whatever but, 
Yeah, but it's it, it's like uh you know like a morbidly obese person with another morbidly <laughs> obese person. Well, they enjoy or, yeah, obesity. You know, it's yeah. like yeah, well, <laughs> they enjoy obesity. Well, they enjoy but it, 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 not it getting onto um you know rides at the amusement park. Yeah, but how many times have you seen couples be like, oh my god, that doesn't look right? You know what I mean? Like 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 a like a supermodel and and a dweeb or or, or something. <laughs> but I I say I, I say like eighty percent of couples I see on a daily looks like they should be together. Isn't yeah. that weird? I think we share a pretty good sense of humor. I I don't know. I mean, I obviously get way dirtier with my sense of humor. Uh, all I all I'm doing is just crude humor at home. Everything's a my dick. Everything's a oh fuck it. You know what I mean? I just turn all everything right. into a dick. Joke. <laughs> but like, but aside from that, I think you know. I think if someone slips and falls on the ice, we're both gonna have a fun laugh at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's yeah, just yeah, different. Yeah. I just oh, I, I hate to be the the type of couple that. Um, which, by the way, actually, yesterday. So yesterday, I, I played a little carnival game at this nightclub we went to for this live AF premiere, and I won the carnival game. And can and, we show my yeah, animals? I won. I won Tasha one of these things. And then also, oh, it, it, is this uh, live AF? Does that stand for live as fuck? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, no, artistic freedom. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, really. Uh, but artistic freedom. No. Yeah, that's what you say. It's a double entendre. That's what you. Yeah, it's a double entendre. I bet. I'll Come give you a double on. entendre. But uh, but I won, and then she she had a she had a uh, video of um her like screaming like oh my gosh congrats and she was so happy for me and Darren Darren messaged me he said he said I've how never... does she sound like <laughs> oh I mean <laughs> no I don't want to play no I want to play it I want to play it that's basically it that's basically how she sounded hold on how do I... you know I actually heard someone else have a high pitched scream like that when they were playing it and it made me jump out of my skin hold on I feel bad now for everyone else who was listening Baby, you got it come on you can do it <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> that's literally this. Hold on, was that the one? Was that? <laughs> no, no, hold on. Wait. That, was, that wasn't even it. Hold on, that, that wasn't even it. Yeah. Okay, here. No, you're there. What year? Watch the whole thing. Baby, you got it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> you got one. I'm throwing. I gotta get two more. Oh, one more. I gotta get one more. There it is. <laughs> so then so Darren that sounds exactly so that sounds excited. exactly but then my buddy Darren messages me let's see oh, is there a minute? and he goes what did he say he goes um oh no 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 you know it wasn't Darren it was Channing hold on a second this is and he goes he goes I've never heard Tasha be so supportive <laughs> and I go, who yeah. was it my who buddy it? Channing and I go yeah it's because she she won a fucking stuffed animal <laughs> I want you to be that supportive. That? That's so cool. I want you to be that Here, supportive. That right? That's so great. Be that supportive after a stand-up show. What are these, though? Are they so just? This is the little logo. This is the live logo. This is like when is you it, download what, the app. I, 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 Okay, so live as fuck, which I'm going to call as fuck. <laughs> so is this like a, a like? A competitor to all the other live stuff. Yeah, I mean there are a bunch of platforms that do it. Uh, it's it originated in Taiwan, I think, and over makes, there it's called Seventeen App. What what makes this different? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You can send gifts and stuff. Well, all streaming People- services are like that in general, though. Um, but yeah, it's just you know, it's just another streaming service. We should get Chris on. I mean, Chris should absolutely be on it you should. with with this fucking setup that you have. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you know what? I mean, this change because uh, for the longest time, I was like, why is my audio not working? I just need that stupid cable and oh, oh that I God. have plugged in right now. Yeah, yeah not, not the white one, but that little gray thing. I got this cable that for my Bachelor thing. recap videos that I do. A real professional over here, but it wouldn't work with my old phone, so I just I just held on to it. But yeah, we'll definitely. I mean, pop that over there. Um, I'll find out. Like, yeah, it's it's only like a five dollar thing, but yeah, it's amazing. You got like a you got two thousand dollar phone. You got all this equipment, and like we got a one dollar cord that won't work right. And I've tried like every version of it. How do you spell your name, by the way? T A S H A. Oh, okay. That's a regular Tasha. I thought, is it Tasha for, for short for something? Or just, it, Tasha. Well, black, just Tasha. Black women, or a lot of black women named Tasha. No, that's well, what there, I'm saying. But there's another, black and Russian. Some people spell it with O. T-O-S-H-A. Really? Mm-hmm. Like Tosh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I hear... Is there Christmas music in the background? It sounds wow. like it, yeah. Is there Christmas music? 
Maybe we're picking up a signal. No, I think we're picking up a signal or something, like a radio signal. Maybe someone who's listening to Christmas music just drove by. Anyway, can we do... Uh, let's get Tasha on the... Uh, can we get Tasha on no, the... No, um, I'm not singing. No, get you on the... Uh, what's the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The, oh, uh, yeah. You definitely got to sing. Yeah. I, wanna, I, I want you to sing it. You can let's sing, do it because right? we're at... No, we're, I'm a horrible uh, perfect. singer. That's why, that's why I'm all people I'll do, do it, this. I'll do it first then if Tasha's no, 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 nervous. No, 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 no. No, ladies first. Ladies bro. first. <laughs> okay, so so this is auto-tune. So it, it, you'll sound good regardless if you're a bad singer. Eh? Okay. Okay, so hold on. Let me give you the mic. But what am I going to sing? You're going to sing. Christmas carols? I got, I got, no, no, no. I got like Should a, she keep her headphones on? Huh? Of course. Just take off your headphones. Or take the headphones put off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you gotta put this over like oh, yeah. Now she looks like a Wendy's employee. <laughs> 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 take my does order. Does this go in my ear or just... But, okay. No, no, no. Not in her not, ear. Where does it go? It's just not above, right your, yeah, above your ear. It, yeah, above your ear. Yeah, pop those ears out. <laughs> Tasha and I are going to have Dumbo children. Make sure you... Okay. Yeah, you look oh, like uh, put it behind my clip is in the way. There we go. Oh, she's got you got your little band aid on your elbow. Okay, so yeah. now you can put on your headphones. So is this right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. I hear I'll it right. Move this cord there. <laughs> put on my head. Hang on, folks. Here. It's about to get okay. riveting. All right, everybody. Okay. I'm are gonna you ready sound to go? Like Ariana Grande. Okay. Are you ready? To Am go? I Pete yeah. Davidson? Are you gonna dump me? What okay. song should I sing? Anybody have suggestions? Last Christmas. Okay, you're officially on auto tune. So try to sing, girl. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's chipmunk sound. <laughs> How about we wish you a merry Christmas from the sap? No, a better song, a Christmas song. Oh, I Make got it one. Make it up. Ready? Ready? Sure. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow. Have a cup of cheer. Have a holly jolly Christmas. And in case you didn't hear. Oh, by golly, have a holly jolly Christmas. Now, really this try to year. sing, though. Huh? Try to like sing. A hey, yeah, go yeah, hey, do a riff. Hey, Wait, yeah. Then we need like a Mariah Carey song or something. Uh, What's a good no, one? Or Michael I... Buble or something. Buble. No, we're going to freestyle the song right now. Go ahead, girl. But I don't, Come on, you did UCP 101. You just, you just got to get out of your comfort zone. Just be like, just ah, yeah, give me some of Mariah Carey. Give me some of that Mariah Carey, baby. I don't know Mariah Carey. Oh, yeah, you could just do it. Just, just, just That's do the it. song. I don't know Mariah Carey. Yeah, there the you go. All out the holly. Yeah. Let the tree before my spirit falls again. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. You sound how like high, a How high can you go? Yeah, I'm go, not go. a high pitch ah, singer. Okay, so, uh, no, I'll sing low. So, so the thing with this is this is, is like very robotic. So the higher you go, it's chromatic. So try to go like like Mariah Carey. Like, ah, watch. All right. And, and, and start low. Like, ah, go. <laughs> We're gonna repair some windshields. People listening in their car. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I just told you I'm not a singer. That, you are a singer. No, that, that was. was that, I mean, was nice. I mean, you, you sounded good. Uh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> kind of. Thanks. I like no. that beat. What's we're, we're, so? It's so you have different categories, like different different uh, genres you choose there. Yeah, what? yeah. What kind? What what what, what kind of Do you genre? Have anything are you that's to like look jazz, for? jazz Christmas. Yeah, Michael Bublé, is, baby. Is something I asking, jazzy. I know, I'm no, I'm asking really specific. <laughs> Do you have jazz Christmas? <laughs> I like Christmas, but only jazz Christmas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sex Actually podcast, bringing you light sounds of the jazz wave Christmas. Taking it back to the early days. Like chestnut, chestnuts? Uh, yeah. Chestnuts on- roasting. On a- you need the auto tune. Yeah, can we beatbox yeah. chestnuts roasting on an open Rock fire? and roll. Is that jazzy enough for no. you? Jingle bells. This is good. <laughs> what song goes with this? You just feel like a two time it. It's a marshmallow world and oh, the yeah. winner When the snow comes to cover the ground Oh yeah, yeah, yeah It's a time for play It's a whipped cream day 
I'll wait for it the whole year round. Yeah, yeah. It's a yum, yummy world made for sweethearts. Take a walk with your favorite girl. Oh, yeah. It's a sugar date. What if spring is late? And winter is a marshmallow world. Yeah, and that wasn't even auto tune. Yeah, that was even auto tune. That was just your voice. Uh, everybody's like, oh, God. Yeah, that please, was good. Never again. I couldn't tell if it was auto tune or not because you were actually hitting the notes. For me, I would not be hitting the notes. You would know if it was not auto tuned. <laughs> like, you could totally, yeah. I mean, if a, if a pop singer's auto tune went out, they'd be fucked. Right? Yeah, I mean, no, from, uh, a lot of them have good. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a tune right now. You're, you're. Hey. Hey. Give me a little sex actually podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is episode uh, 313, so give me something. 313. Oh, uh, you know what? Okay, so here, let me, uh, let me, yeah, give me something and I'll play it at the beginning as a teaser. What? Just whatever. Go ahead. Welcome to the Sex Actually Podcast, episode 313, <laughs> singing Christmas songs in auto-tune. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like a stage mom? <laughs> I don't know, honey. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, can you do something slow like um like uh like when like uh what's a white Christmas? Yeah, I can do that. Ba-do, ba-do, we gotta put the do, uh, do, auto tune back do, on do, though. Hi. What? What? Uh, 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 give me. Can give I, me let, let me sing White Christmas. No, I want to. I don't even it. know the words. Oh, look at that! Now everybody wants the auto tune, huh? <laughs> like kids fighting on Christmas. Tasha morning. doesn't share. <laughs> you can sing it. I don't know. The, I don't know the words to any song. I'm. I'm. Like, I know I, you know. I, you know. I make up words. I do know that. <laughs> So what are we doing? Mm-hmm. What do you got there, Tasha? What are we doing? Give me some like White uh Christmas? Something well, anything that's got like a mm, boo-doo, boo-doo, bump 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 bottom boo-doo, boo-doo, bump 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 bottom I'm dreaming of a white It's like a chipmunks. It's like Alvin and the Chipmunks version. Start over, start over. Boo-doo, boo-doo, boop, boop. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas robot Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow. In the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. With every Christmas card I write. Do I sound that bad? This is so sweet. <laughs> May your days be, be merry and bright. <laughs> <laughs> and may all, all your Christmases be wide. <laughs> should we end on the no? Should we no, end on that? that? No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I okay, do, do I get to do it? Sure, right, babe. Do I need it. it. The, the fact that you. All right, I, I keep this. It's a, it's tough though. It's like robot-y Yeah. And there's like there's a little bit of delay. No, no, no. Other way. Other way? Wait, hold on. Oh, like this? Yeah, that has to go in the back of the head. Oh, there we go. Give us your best Ariana Grande, Dave. Oh, I don't know. Uh, mic go. My real mic. Your real mic? You lost it. You have no mics. Oh, here it is. Am I, uh, am I auto-tuned right now? Don't speak into that mic. Oh, I got, oh sorry. <laughs> I was, uh, oh, that's why oh, I couldn't you're tell. Not, you're not an auto-tuned. Okay, good. Well, I like this. Yeah, anyway. You know, audio, uh, folks out there. You want to go on auto-tuned? Um... Yeah, why not? Why not going on to that way when I rant to people like me, well, you know, the thing is <laughs> the thing with relationships. Actually, I'm supposed to read a um can I maybe I can auto tune read a, a listener's email. All right, do that. You want me to do that? Mm-hmm. Um we have a listener. But you who, have to read it high you have to you have to sing it. Otherwise what's the point of auto tune? 
What if it's a really sad email? Sing the email. Well, if it gets sad, then you can stop singing. All right, here's what I'll do. I'll I'll um we're 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 gonna answer this uh, listener's email and then um and then we'll work we'll start to work on getting out of here. Okay. And, and then we'll do a song and then we'll be done. How does that sound? Do we? <laughs> so hold on. So do you want to sing? I'm just going to um, talk, sing this okay. email. Oh, Should we point? Okay, yeah, I'll sing this for sure. Yeah. Here, I'll just turn my... S- so my sound's off now. Turn my... Yeah. S- so my sound's off now. Turn oh. my... S- so my sound's off now. Whoa. Boy, that guy's got an... That turn my was so, so cool. My sound's off now. Turn my... Yeah. S- so my sound's off now. Right, give, <laughs> my s- give, me a, give me a boy's name. Uh, Jackson. Okay. Which, by the way, what is that sound? It's the wires. It's like signals or something, okay, babe. Cool. I don't know. All right. What did you, you say? Jackson? Jackson. All right. This is from Jackson. Are you ready? Do you want to do audio? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. All right. Uh, everybody be silent for two seconds. Hi, Sap. The first time I wrote in, it was about personal challenges. But this time, it's more about my relationship. Hi, Sam. I've been with my significant other for almost three years, and it's been great. We have a very stable... I feel so bad for this person. (laughs) (laughs) This is the coolest way you could read a letter ever. We have a very stable, trusting, and mature relationship, which is something I haven't had before, and I really appreciate it. My significant other is really special, and we've lived together for almost two years. I know that they are someone who I would want to marry for many reasons. But I'm young, or at least consider myself to be 23. And it freaks me out, the idea that I'd be settled for life. Don't get me wrong. Throughout the majority of our relationship, I like that, though, because of how compatible we are. And they... Oh, I I fucked it up. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) Throughout the majority of our relationship, I like that... Yeah, this is going to be a little bit longer. Uh, Wait, am I in auto-tune? No, hold on. Okay. (laughs) Do you like how I said auto-tune? Hey, the only real issue is about our sex life. I don't know why exactly it's lacking, <laughs> but it freaks me out that it's not particularly there. It could be medications on my side that affect my sex drive, but I can't stop taking those to see if it's why. I also feel like it's. I also feel like I've done a lot of personal growth in recent years, and I'm not done growing yet. I don't want to put a relationship ahead of myself right now, but I tend to do that. To throw an additional wrench into the mix, I'll be moving quite a ways away in about a year, and it has been a lingering conversation about whether they would try to find a job where I'm going so they can come with me or stay put. That freaks me the f out. They are so amazing, and I truly love them. But there's so much pressure that if they were to come with me, it would be my fault if we were to break up, and then they are now in this place they only came to because of me. People are so quick to say, if you're questioning it, it's not right. But I question everything. It's how I am. I don't want to throw away a great person because we make each other happy. But I also don't want to drag them with me for it when it's not working out or feel the pressure to stay together so they don't resent me for making them come. They've stuck with me through anxiety, depression, and still love me. But I don't know if I'm ready to be in it for the reason of giving myself space to allow change to happen and to grow as well as not knowing if I'm ready to be with one person the rest of my life. And I feel selfish for that. This is a lot. Bottom line is that I love this person, even though we have some things to work out for it to be perfect, but a lot of change is happening, and I don't know what, if I should encourage them to come along for it. And then the next part was for us, not the listeners, and I can't say that part. But, the, 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 so the question is, do you drag someone along to your personal journeys? Do you, do you, just, do you let someone well, move with you? That's the question it, they're asking. You know, Jackson that- is asking. Yeah, it's it is important to like ask these questions and be considerate and weigh the pros and cons, but you know, Jackson should not discount what his friends said that like if it was right, it wouldn't be a question. It would be a sure thing. The other person would be like, yeah, well, but yeah, but okay, Tasha, you done- question everything. I do question everything. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason to like, you know, it should be something that you think about. But if you don't know in your 
you I think in most instances you have a gut response that tells you whether or not this is the right thing to do. And I think that the other person would be like, okay, well, let's, I'll start exploring my options. Um, you know, think about, you know, like, I think it would be something that, like, they consider right away. They would make the move, like, okay, let me look at my options. Let me see what kind of job opportunities are there. Let's see if we can make this work. So what should, so what should this guy do? Because <laughs> he actually didn't want me to answer. He wanted you to be on the podcast to answer. He specifically requested it. Can, we, uh, can you read my question? Because Tasha has good advice. Yeah, you know. Uh. <laughs> I, say, I say, look, my, my buddy moved across the country and his, and his lady went with him. And he, and he, he was going to move regardless. And look, I think the thing is. No, like, she, she was going to move regardless. No, the first time. These are different. They, they flip-flopped. The first time, uh, Darren, he moved, and his girlfriend was like, I'll come too. And he's like, okay. But like he didn't ask her because when you ask someone, it's a lot. You have to make sure that they're going to be completely able to be self-sustainable. Well, but that's, what, that's sort of my response is that the other person in this particular equation, if that person is giving the vibes like they don't know, then that says a lot. You know, you can't exactly that. You can't put that on somebody. I think Jackson has to put the ball in their court. And, you know, I th- I think Jackson has done that. To say to say what? You can come if you I, that want? This is happening. This is my next move. I don't want to put pressure on you. But, like, you know, Jackson's emailing you questioning. I don't know if this is right. Everybody's saying I, that, you know... If you don't know, then that that says something, and I think that's and it's that's a litmus true. test, and it's either survive this level, and you, maybe you end up moving to Michigan together, and you start a farm. But this is the level. If you're gonna go, you gotta go, and you gotta just see if it flies. I don't know. Have you guys ever had that uh, conversation, you and your wife, where like you've had any sort of like big decisions you need to make, and you're like, this we have to either oh you need this one. Oh yeah, Dave, you're wearing. Sorry, his mic. I took your uh, microphone. Oh, I turned it down. Here you go. You're back. Okay. Um, <laughs> what was the question? So, like, have you have you and your wife like like how do you guys tackle big questions, big like decisions to make together? Uh, I don't know. It's always a tough one. Um, that's that's a really hard question because it, like every big uh, problem is always a different way to handle it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, and it, it's it's there's not a uh, a one size fits all. In but in, when it's you and your wife. I feel like every problem that arises, you tackle as a team of because course. you know you are a unit. Yeah. You know, the success of each of you is now dependent on the both of you. And so in a relationship, whether you're married or not, I think that's sort of how it goes. And if Jackson is getting the vibe that his partner is not a 100% team oriented in this problem, then then Jackson's got to process that. And it's tough because this guy, Jackson's uh, significant other doesn't, he does he didn't owe, he doesn't owe it or, or his, wow, this is confusing. You don't owe it to somebody else if they decide to pick up their bags and move. You don't owe it to them. Right. It's just one of those things. Right. So it's like, you just got to, you know, you might break up. You might, this might be a breakup. If you decide. How old are they? They're in their early 20s. 23. 23. Oh God. That's so young. I mean. You got to be on. selfish. You got to be, you got to do what you need to do for yourself and uh, love will find a way. Auto tune that motherfucker. <laughs> love will find a way. <laughs> love it will find <laughs> I've been found out. Love, it will find a way. Higher is better. Love, it will find a way. But there's got to be that level of commitment there. <laughs> Either you're on the same team or you're not on the same team. Either you're thinking as a unit or you're thinking as individuals. And both of them are okay. You know, and when you take the ego out of it, both of them are okay. 23 is a time in your life when, like, you should be growing and learning and taking opportunities and figuring and out who know you anything. are. Yeah, you, you don't know me, anything um, when you're 23. Can you give me some uh, bass? Can I get, a, like, a deep voice here? Listen, listen, Jackson. I meant like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Give me a, yeah, give me yeah. some organs, but give me, uh, give my bass a little, uh, give my voice a little bass. Why don't give you just talk voice lower? A no, I can't. Okay, yeah. yeah, a little higher than that. Yeah, like right there. Okay, listen, Jackson. 
Well, no, I sound like a rape victim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I did. I sound okay, like okay, 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 okay. I got you. Go. Okay. Yeah. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jackson, this is what you got to do. I need you to take your significant other. I need you to drag them sexually underneath that mistletoe. You got to pull up their hair and kiss them behind their ear. You said, I love you. But I'm moving away. What's it gonna be, Jackson? Significant other? Are you gonna come with me across the country, or are you gonna come in your pants by yourself? Because I need you. <laughs> if it ain't you, I'll find somebody else. Because them the rope, bitches. That's all from the sap. Very okay. well done. <laughs> Good advice. Think we lost a listener there. Oh, I'm still mad. <laughs> <laughs> should we get out of here? Should we leave? We're at 75 minutes. We should probably cut this thing off. I mean, we're, we're having we're, too much fun. Yeah, this is going to be a five-hour. Chris, hour where episode. can people find you? Where can they book? You? Uh, where can they book you for their private shows? What's, what's uh, uh, all my information is available on my website, chrisrubioartist.com. It's with a K. With, with a K. K R I S R U B I O and artist. And uh, you could uh, see me. Live stream every Tuesday and Thursday in my uh, house uh, around the afternoon. And me and Amir Khalil, we just started this live musical improv podcast slash live stream every Wednesday at 2. So wow, the, yeah. so cool. So the whole concept is if you guys go to our live stream and you guys give us ideas or if 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 like Dave Neal, if we see you, you're watching, be like, oh, let's 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 write a song to Dave Neal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's, and so it's, it's very interactive. We're always reading comments. We just did the first one uh, last week and it was it was great. It was like a lot of views in the span of an hour. So, oh, fuck yeah. yeah That's so, awesome. So we got the right formula. We just need to, for, um, you know, write it out a little longer. You yeah, know? it's fun. I mean, there's people listening. They're fucking sitting in traffic. They're doing their thing. They, they yeah. want to hear uh, Tasha sing an auto-tune. Yeah. I do that. I listen to podcasts and I go, what the fuck am I even listening to? I don't know. Just friends shooting the shit, having too much Which coffee. Which is great. I mean, that's what a podcast is all about, you know? It's, it's, oh, it's, it's I, talking I always... and, and trying to... Be, but, but, you know, I've... I've I've done a lot, a lot of podcasts where I was like, I need to do my own thing, and then it's just, it's just fun to find another musical comic like Amir Khalil, and you know we could just feed off each other. Yeah, you know? that's so, fun. Yeah. Oh, cool. Good for you guys. Yeah. Well, you, you, you should definitely go on it. Yeah, have me on. I mean, I, have a I mean, I just, I just heard the freestyle, and I'm like, oh, Dave could freestyle. Oh yeah, I could do a little bit. I could bump some uh, bars. Or- <laughs> <laughs> you could bump some bars. <laughs> I sound like an undercover cop pretending to be a rapper. I could pump some bars with you, brothers. I could totally do that. Um, oh well, my come God. back anytime, and uh, and thanks for being on the pod. We'll uh, we'll say our goodbyes, and then maybe we'll just play. We'll just jam out, and then we'll just fade Sounds off. Sounds great. So Tasha Courtney and everyone, if you want to uh, live stream Tasha, you just got to download Live AF. It's on, it's in the App Store. Find Tasha. She's uh, one of the verified featured. Um, content creators there. I, I've been verified too, but I haven't streamed yet just because I'm you know, busy trying to work and get money for Christmas stuff. And anyway, if anyone wants some soap, this is your last chance to get it. I think we'll cut off soap orders by December 15th. But here's what you want to do. Go to sex, uh, email us sexactuallypodcast at gmail.com and let us know you want soap and then we'll let you know what the next uh, process is for that. And if you want to give it away to your family, uh, by all means, this is your chance. Tasha, what else would I miss? I don't know. I think that's it. All right. Can we get what's uh, – give us some playoff music if you do. I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but you got any playoff music you can do for us here? Uh, you could freestyle for me if you want. Oh, jeez. Go. You're an attitude. Get us out. Everybody, this was episode 313 of the Sex Actually P-O-D-C-A-S-T podcast. That's what we are, the Sex Actually Show. We'll talk to you in your ears. We'll fuck you through your eardrums with our voices and our minds and our good-looking bodies. Tasha, Courtney, and Dave Neal with Christopher Rubio. Rubio in the house today. Rubio is not... He's been married for 12 years. That's a dozen, if you ask me.
Natasha, Courtney, and Dave Neal gonna hit you up pretty soon. Five years dating. He feels like oh, yeah. to buy a ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone. I would've gone.